This is Trevor Benko, CEO of TGB Supplements. This is Ben Jordan, CEO of TGB Supplements. Today we're going to do a video talking about equipoise, uh, some of the benefits and you know, side effects that can occur when using this compound. Uh, before we get started, we want to say this is not medical advice. It's just our opinion. It's for research and educational purposes only. Uh, so, you want to go ahead and start off? Yeah, equipoise, it's bold and known as the chemical name, uh, bold, and un bold known on declinate. Um, it's a derivative of testosterone. It exhibits a pretty strong anabolic effect with moderately androgenic properties as well. Yeah, it's, it's about the same anabolic effectiveness as testosterone with half the androgenicity. So it's a little bit milder when it comes to side effects. Uh, the undecanate is the most common ester. It's actually one carbon longer than the decanate uh, that you're commonly used to seeing on uh, decadorabolin. Uh, so it is a long ester, but uh, usually for performance enhancing effects, usually guys want to inject at least once a week uh, to keep this uh, steady in the blood. Uh, I think for for medical use, they were recommending like once every three to four weeks to keep a stable level, but unfortunately it just doesn't usually work out that way. Uh, yeah, and it, it takes such a long time to build up the blood plasma volume from the ester anyways, so the once twice a week really gets it built up quickly. The clinical thing, it takes so long to get built up. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, it was used in the veterinary field mainly for horses, race horses, to help them. Uh, it's known for, well, this is, I think it's an overrated characteristic, but it's known for increasing red blood cells, uh, which will increase your VO2, uh, increases the oxygen uptake. Uh, so that's one of the, the main... Yeah, all anabolics boost red blood they cell do. production. It's just the, the bold unknowns, it seems like it's a little bit more pronounced with that one. Tremblin is another one that's probably pretty close to equipoise in that aspect. They say anadrol is one of the most potent at that. That's why it's used for people with anemia. Uh, but, uh, you know, a good thing about equipoise, it is very mild. It also doesn't aromatize as much as testosterone. It's about half, uh, I think it's half the aromatization. Yeah, it's very slight. And, uh, you know, so it's a little more than uh, like a decadorabolin, which I think is about 20% that of testosterone for aromatizing. So it's very mild. Uh, as far as side effects, it's also very mild because of that. There, there's something also not many know about boldenone. It converts into an actual anti-estrogen, one 4 dendione Not many people are familiar with that. Which is actually a pretty potent form of an anti-estrogen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we don't really know how much is actually converted into that. Yeah, so they don't really know how effective it is either in the body. So it's kind of hard to say, uh, you know, how much of an impact that actually has. Uh, I believe I've seen that in uh, Seth, Seth Roberts' mm -hmm. pharmacology uh, belief when he talked about equipoise. He, he spoke about that. Uh, also, another big benefit with equipoise is that there is very little water retention usually with this compound. The results are usually very clean and dry, uh, so it could be used for a clean bulk or for a cut either way. Some guys will eliminate it from the cut altogether just because it does aromatize, uh, but usually if you're using an aromatase inhibitor of some sort, like an eczemastain or a Remodex, uh, you will have very little issue, if any at all, uh, I mean, unless you're super sensitive. Yeah, another thing the bold known is really good for is boosting collagen synthesis as well, uh, just like DECA does. And, and guys, they prefer the, the bold known over it without all the water retention. Unless you're like a power lifter or somebody's trying to bulk up, then the DECA would work a little bit better for you. Yeah, it seems like Equipoise is a little bit milder than DECA. It doesn't shut you down as much, that's for sure. Uh, and it has less side effects for most people. Some people have some a lot more severe side effects with the... Uh, the 19 nors and they do. Yeah, you don't have to deal with the prolactin increase from the, the bold known. Yeah, it's very rare to have any kind of issues like we said with gynecomastia just because it is so mild. But if you're taking a high dose of testosterone with it, you know, you could definitely have some issues. It just depends on, you know, what else you're doing alongside of the equipoise. If you could run equipoise by itself, uh, which a lot of guys don't know. You know, everybody thinks you need testosterone with everything, but equipoise is testosterone based. So, I mean, you, if you could run Equipoise by itself, it would probably be a safer first cycle than testosterone. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you just might notice a little bit of a libido drop from you not having no DHT conversion from it. Um, it does convert the dihydrobolinone a little bit, which is a DHT-based compound, one testosterone, which we did a video on, but I don't think that would give you too much of a libido effect. Yeah, that's very true. That would be the only downfall, but, it, it, you know, with... With that being said, I highly doubt that most people would have too much of an issue with that, uh, especially if it's your first time. 
uh, you know, with what Ben said there about the dihydrobolden, it doesn't it doesn't actually convert to dihydrobolden very much. It's very slight, like you said. So uh, now dihydrobolden is actually a more potent form of equipoise. It just like DHT is more potent than testosterone as far as the anabolic effects. So if you were to take a you know five alpha reductase inhibitor like uh, let's say uh, Proscar or finasteride. Uh, you're, you're really not going to get much of an added benefit using something like that with equipoise because it's very slight, uh, it has a very slight impact as far as the conversion to dihydrovoltanum. You really don't want to use those compounds if you have to anyways yeah. just for that fact. You don't want to use them unless you have to just because they could have, uh, some of them do have a negative impact on your sexual uh, desires and they're not really sure why that is or you know what what actually occurs but it can hurt your sex drive significantly in some people yeah and it can hinder the effectiveness of your cycle slightly as well now equipoise it is uh, a steroid that is suppressive just like any other steroid if you're taking something that is strong enough to build muscle you're usually going to have some type of suppression and equipoise is also a very suppressive steroid uh, but it's not as suppressive as some other steroids like trembolone or other 19 nors like decadorbalin or trestolone, for example. Uh, but with that being said, with it, if you use the undeclinate version of equipoise, uh, it is very it's a very long ester, so it's going to take a long time to clear out of your system, which means you know you're probably going to have at least three weeks before you can start your post cycle. Yeah, I mean, I myself I've ran both the equipoise undeclinate and the uh, bold known sipinate. I like the shorter ester myself, uh, just because it gets built up in you quicker. Um, didn't really notice too much gains wise versus the ester different it, they work pretty much the same for me yeah uh, the sipinate the only downfall with the sipinate ester one it's very rare if you find it well any equipoise for the most part is probably going to be underground uh, but if you do find a sipinate it's it's definitely going to be an underground product uh, and also it doesn't being that it is a sipinate ester usually that ester it's smoother for the injections but it doesn't hold as much per mill or milligrams per milliliter uh, and it's more likely to fall out of solution now I've seen uh, equipoise the undeclinate uh, bold and known version actually dosed up to 400 milligrams per milliliter with no uh, crashing whatsoever with the sipinate you're lucky to have 200 milligrams per milliliter and that can be an impact for some people. It does make a difference. Some guys don't want to you know, inject more, uh, so that be can become an issue. Yeah, the original, like the Fort Dodge, it was 50 milligrams in big 50 milliliter jugs. Yeah, back in the, you know, one you, you could get it from uh, the veterinary steroid supply yep. uh, in Mexico and so on. They were actually dosed in 50 milligrams per milliliter, so these guys would, you, you know, it was, guys would use it in a lot lower doses back then. Mm -hmm. You know, anywhere from 50 to maybe 400 milligrams max uh, would be, you know, the dosing for equipoise. Nowadays, guys are going a lot higher. Uh, the common doses are usually four to 600 milligrams. Yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon for guys to run 1,000, 1,200 milligrams of EQ either. No, we definitely don't recommend that. No. Uh, you, you know, more is better. In most cases, you want to use as little as possible. And using any steroid at any time is never a good thing to do. Uh, you know, there's obviously there's going to be consequences, so you need to be prepared for that. Uh, but equipoise is something that even you know some women have tried to use over the years because it is milder than testosterone, but it still has virilizing effects. So you want to use a very low dose. Uh, I wouldn't go uh, very high whatsoever. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to be honest with you. But you know, I know that some women that I do know that have used it have gone 50 to 150 milligrams per week. 150 is a good bit in my opinion. But uh, you know, it, it has been done. <clears throat> yeah. Another thing they say about the bold known is it causes a massive increase in appetite. I mean, I never really noticed that too much myself. I know there's some people that say they have ravenous hunger off of it. Others say they don't really notice anything off of it. So, I mean, that's kind of a little bit of a myth as well for, with the EQ. Yeah, it definitely varies from person to person. Um, another thing, that a common side effect some people have with boldenone is uh, anxiety. And that, that is definitely a true thing. It, but it depends on the person. Once again, some people have no issues whatsoever. Um, it just it just varies uh, very much so. Do they claim that that's from like the rapid increase in red blood cell production a little bit. That's what they say, but uh, I mean I, I think that's more bro science than yeah. anything. 
Uh, I don't personally, like I said, I really don't think it's much different than any other steroid like yeah. testosterone. I mean, mine get a little elevated when I run testosterone replacements, so it just depends on the person. Now, one thing you can do to help uh, prevent that would be to run uh, grapefruit extract. Uh, grapefruit extract can actually help a lot uh, with keeping your red blood cells in your hematocrit within normal range. Uh, that's something that you have to be consistent with and use over a long period of time. That's, uh, that's not an engine, right? Well, not not necessarily Naringin, just uh, the grapefruit extract in general, but Naringin is a, a stronger version of that, so yeah. Uh, you could use that, I believe. Uh, yeah, isn't it if the hematocrit's elevated, it brings it down, mm -hmm. or if it's lower, it, it elevates it yeah. up into normal as well? Exactly, so okay. it can work for either or. Okay. Uh, also, something that's very interesting about Equipoise, structurally, it is very, it's identical to Dianabol, except for the fact that Dianabol has a 17 alpha alkylation, uh, and the Equipoise has a 17 beta undeclinate, which is the ester attached to it. Uh, other than that, they're exactly the same, but they're totally different steroids because of the 17 alpha alkylation, which just goes to show you that that isn't just for uh, oral uh, bypassing the liver. It's not just for helping you get through the liver. Uh, yeah, it completely changes how the compound acts. In the totally body. changes. It makes it a very uh, a much harsher uh, compound. It's a much harsher version of estradiol that it converts into. Uh, it converts, Dianabol converts into 17 uh, methyl estradiol, I believe, uh, which is very, very potent form of estrogen, yep. which causes a lot of gynecomastia, where di uh, Equipoise does not do that. Uh, yeah, another one, uh, Super Draw, if you guys are familiar with, it's a dimethylated masteron. So it has two methylation attachment to it, and that, those are completely different compounds for what they do. The methylations definitely make and change the characteristics of the steroids. What we're trying to say. Uh, so even though they're similar structurally, they have no. Uh, they're almost totally different uh, altogether. Uh, now, as far as people using Equipoise in different cycles, like we had said, you can use it for bulking or you can use it for cutting. Some guys will stack it with testosterone, uh, maybe like an Anadrol uh, or you know even a Dianabol for an oral. You know, if you're going to add an oral in, which I'm not very fond of oral steroids because they have very harsh side effects, uh, but guys do use them. And uh, now, if you were using it for cutting, you may want to you know, use something like a, a Trembolone. Uh, or a halo test in Winstrel. Yeah, stronger androgens to help bring out hardening and some strength as well, just for the, the bold known, it's just pretty much purely anabolic. Yeah, I would, uh, in my, my personal preference, would be Masteron. I think Masteron would stack very nice with Equipoise. Uh, another thing I think is a myth, guys will say you need to run Equipoise for 16 to 20 weeks. That's definitely not true. Uh, it's it's active in your system after a couple of weeks. It, like Ben said, it takes a few weeks to build up the plasma level because of the long ester. But once it's built up, you're you're getting the effects, and they'll, they'll last even after you stop taking your last injection. Uh, personally, I think that after so long, your body adapts to it, and you stop getting the results. Yep. Yeah, myself, I've never <laughs> ran the the bold known on Declinate for longer than 12 weeks, and it's worked well for me. Yeah, same I just, as the Cipionate. Just don't think it's it's necessary, mm -hmm. and uh, honestly, you're just keeping yourself suppressed for longer. Guys, you'll use that as an excuse to run steroids for a longer period of time. Uh, in my opinion, I think that's uh, what, no, what people yeah. do. <laughs> the guys just want to use keep using steroids. Yeah, I got to run it an extra four weeks because that's how long my EQ got to be. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Equipoise, being that it, you know, if you're using the undeclinate version, it does stay in your system very long, similar to a Decadorabolin. It's very likely that you could test positive on a steroid test if you're, you know, in a governing body that tests yeah, for steroids. For months after. Yeah, so if you're being tested, you know, if you're a professional athlete, you, you know, you don't want to use something like this. Because no. uh, most likely you will Any fail. Any long esters, really. Yeah, they, they build up, mm -hmm. they're stored in the fat, and small amounts may be in there for months and months after your last injection. And you may not even be getting the benefits from it, and you'll still test positive. Yep. So it's definitely something that you'd want to avoid. Uh, overall, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up uh, with Equipoise. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. You know, we're, we find all uh, compounds like this interesting yep. just because of the muscle building potential. Yep. Uh, but keep in mind, any steroid, there are lots of side effects, and, and none of them are without risk. And, uh, you know, if you're a young guy uh, thinking about using steroids, uh, we strongly think you need to reconsider mm -hmm. just because you need to build a base first. And even then, most guys can get to where they want to be without steroids. 
Um, if you're going to use steroids, once you start, it's pretty much a, a downward slope. Not saying they're addictive, but they are addictive because you know once once you're putting in as much work as you can and you're still going the other way because you're not on your cycle, it's going to be hard on you mentally. And, uh, and once you experience what it's like to go past what's naturally possible, it's very unlikely you're going to want to go back, which can cause a lot of long-term issues. That's where most of the side effects come in. So these young guys, especially if you're under, you know, 25, you know, getting on steroids is just it's just a bad idea. Yeah, your uh, endocrine system isn't fully developed from anywhere from 21 to 25. There's really no way of knowing. And you're just you're just shorting yourself in the end. That's that's just the truth. I mean, it really is. Uh, yeah, and the way the natural anabolics are nowadays, you can gain great off it. There's guys that gain like a Mount Halidrol cycle off some of them. Yeah, they cost a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to buy your PCT, you don't have to buy your cycle support, and what you you build upon it, you get to keep. You yeah. know what I mean? So you can always delve into anabolics later on. Yeah, might as well build what you can off of that, and then you'll just gain even better because you got more androgen receptors from more muscle tissue. Yeah, the more muscle you have, the more you know effect you're going to have when you do. If you decide to go down that road and take steroids, you will have more effect. So you need to build as much as you can first. Uh, that's just our opinions, and uh, you know we've seen a lot of negative issues from steroids over the years. We're not against them, but they do need to be respected, and, and there are there is a price to pay, uh, no matter what. Uh, if you'd like to find more information about anabolics or performance enhancing drugs, supplements and so on, you can check out our podcast, Anabolic Cartel. We've been working very hard on our forum. It's up. You can sign up now. Uh, for Right now it's free to sign up. Uh, that's going to change. There's going to be some different levels available. Uh, but the information is going to be you know, very detailed and different than what you'll find anywhere else. Uh, we're going to take care of our members. We're going to take care of our moderators. Uh, but the podcast is definitely coming along very well. We have some uh, very uh, well-named guests coming in the near future. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Actually, this is one of the shirts that we're going to have for sale on the, uh, the forum. Uh, this is going to be for forum members only. Anabolic Mafia is going to be part of the Anabolic Cartel Forum. So if you guys like this shirt or the Anabolic Cartel shirts, uh, you can check out the uh, Anabolic Cartel shirts are for sale on our website, tgbsupplements.com. But definitely check out the forum for more information. There's already a lot of articles up. If you want to post some information or just, you know, put in some input, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, now, if you do subscribe to our channel, uh, make sure you click the bell next to the subscribe button. That's a new thing that YouTube's doing. So even if you are subscribed, you may not check our, you may not see our new videos when we upload them unless you hit the little bell. So make sure you do that as well. Uh, but any support you guys give us as far as likes, comments, and so on, we greatly appreciate it. We'll make sure we respond to all your uh, comments. So uh, that's, that's it. we got more videos coming in the future. We hope you enjoyed this, and we have many more to come. So take care.